You're supposed to introduce me. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm Myra Engel, and I have Mike Zerum with Teacher Retirement. Years of creditable service, and you can get credit for partial years. In fact, most teachers retire with something other than a full number of years. And this would be your day-to-day -day membership service goes into this. Your unused sick leave credit, which is real important. <coughs> and also service purchases. And we'll spend a couple of seconds on each one of those. We multiply all those years by 2%. Then we look at your whole TRS career and say, where are the highest consecutive 24 months of compensation? And that's what we'll use. It doesn't have to be your last two. It could be, it could be somewhere right in the middle. Uh, and that is, altogether, your basic benefit <coughs> under Plan A maximum. That's the most you can get from TRS. About 70% of our membership takes that. All the other options will be a percentage of your maximum benefit. And you can also continue your state health benefit plan coverage. And that's for life, too. And the deduction, the premium, can be deducted straight from your TRS check in retirement. So it's a really wonderful package for people who get a pension from us. Uh, here you can see in this example, the longer you work, the more you're going to get from us based on that 10% <coughs> per year formula. And you know, there's a lot of stress when it comes to planning for retirement. That's why you, uh, it's great to have your financial resources people here to help you with that. But in a lot of ways, TRS alleviates a lot of the stress too if you work long enough. There are two thresholds to retire immediately, and that would be 30 years of service at any age, or someone who attains age 60 and has at least 10 years of service. Now, you might work less than 30 years and, and quit. You can wait until you turn 60 and then apply for your pension to start, you know, as long as you leave your money with TRS when you leave. There are a lot of different options to choose from. We're not going to go over each one, but I'll give you some concepts on it. Uh, you do get cost of living adjustments. Your benefit actually grows 3% per year, as long as there's inflation as measured by the consumer price index. Uh, and you can also take a lump sum distribution of cash as one of the uh, variations of your pension. Um, when you uh, are ready to retire, when you're within six months, you'll pick the plan that meets your family needs the best, and you can really fine-tune what you're going to get and what survivors might get. You essentially are taking a ride on a teeter-totter, or seesaw, whatever you call it here in the, in the south. Uh, the more you decide you want for yourself, the less is available for your dependents or for the beneficiary. The more you want to leave to them, the less you would get. And you decide where in this Peter Totter ride you want to get off. Uh, here's a chart for your sick leave and what credit you get. If you have 60 to 69 days, you get three months, for example. And there's nine months in the TRS here based on the old teacher contract, so that's one third of a year. If you work, say, 170 to 189, you would add one full year to your service, just like you were doing your regular job in the classroom or whatever it is you do. Uh, if you work a full 30-year career and never call off sick, I see a lot of teachers with between two and three years of unused sick leave credit. You can actually go more than what's on the chart here. Uh, and here's just an example of the monetary value of sick leave. In this case, someone who didn't use her sick leave, Mary, is ending up with 160 extra dollars per month. And that's a significant <coughs> amount of money that you're getting paid every month for the rest of your life when you retire because of your sick leave. So if you don't need to use your sick leave, this is the, the, the best bet for you. There are uh, service purchases you can buy to actually increase your total year's work under TRS here in Georgia. The most common one is withdrawn service where you work for a while and you quit. And when you quit, you withdrew the money in your account, the money that came out of your check. Um, and then you later decide you want to come back to Georgia TRS covered work. Once you've been back three years, the law allows you to buy back the time you cashed out on. That's called withdrawn service. That's probably one of the more common ones along with out of state service if you taught 
at an out-of-state public school. Maybe you taught for a couple years in Tennessee and you're not going to be getting a benefit from them. Um, it may make sense to convert that time to Georgia time and get more of a pension with Georgia. <coughs> that's the sort of purchase that you could discuss with your financial advisor to see if it makes sense for you to do that. There are others, and they're described in your member's guide. Military time, for example, uh, can be purchased. Uh, this slide uh, goes over the um, features of terminating employment and whether you leave your funds with TRS or you withdraw them. Uh, if you leave your funds and you're vested, like I mentioned earlier, you can get your pension starting at age 60. You can always pull your money out, but then you would be giving up your pension that would have started at age 60 if you pull your money out. And uh, in conclusion, here's our website. It's a very robust site. Uh, there are wonderful tools on there, a pension calculator and a generate benefit estimate tool. We really do uh, recommend that you visit that site. Uh, we always encourage you to join your uh, defined contribution plan, your 403B here. The experts say that in general, you need to replace at least 80% of your pre-retirement income if you want to maintain your standard of living in retirement. And we're painting with a very broad brush stroke here, but just to give you a starting point, um, you know, the typical benefit with TRS is 30 years of service, and you'll get 60%. So where does the other money come from? Well, it can come from Social Security and your 403B are the most likely places. So. We are, for the typical teacher, the main foundation of your retirement, but you will want to uh, supplement it with other forms of, uh, of, of income, and a great way to do that is through your 403B. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate it. I'll yield the floor. Um, I'm Stephen and Charlene, if you don't mind. <coughs> this is Charlene Burnham. Uh, we're the financial advisors assigned to take care of Calhoun City Schools and 403B and the 457B, so didn't tell her I was going to bring her up here, but <laughs> we are a team. Uh, we've been working with Floyd, Polk, and Chattooga counties, just so you know, for the last five years, um, and recently been assigned to come over here and take care of you all, too. Um, my mother is a retired school teacher, so that being said, I've been able to learn the ins and outs of TRS. If you're looking for somebody to help you with the cost-benefit analysis on purchasing out-of-state years of service um, or which option to choose, and I'm happy to go over that with you as well. Um, so the main thing I want to talk to you guys about today is the 1% automatic enrollment that's coming up in July. So your benefits committee uh, and the benefits consultant, Arista Financial Group, have decided that you know in order to encourage more participation in the retirement plan, um, we've seen across the board that you know people have a hard time deciding you know when to make a decision on something, and especially when you're looking at something with numbers and letters <coughs> combined like 403B and 457B. You know what the heck is, does all that mean? You know it's easier just not to make any decision at all. So um, as of July 1st, any employee in Calhoun City Schools that is not already enrolled in a 403B plan. Um, it, you will have until that date to, to opt out or else you will have a 1% contribution from your next check that goes into the 403B account. Um, the 403B account is a supplemental retirement account similar to a 401k. It is a pre-tax um, similar to your health insurance. So for every dollar you put into it, most people will feel about 75 cents or so missing out of your check. Um, you can use your 403B Obviously, it's going to be there to supplement your retirement income. Um, you can use it to purchase service from TRS if you had some years that you withdrew um, or if you had out-of-state years or military service or something like that. Um, show of hands for people in the room that started their teaching career or time in education before the age of 30. <coughs> Usually, it's most, and it is in this room, too. So another thing I want to share with you guys today is the other options. So the 403B is the default investment. It always has been. Um, the rule of thumb on when you can access most retirement accounts, whether it be a 403B or a 401K or an IRA, the IRS has decided at age 59 and a half that that's when they'll waive their 10% early withdrawal penalty. So how do you avoid that 10% withdrawal penalty? If you fall into that group, then you may want to give uh, myself or Charlene a phone call or shoot us an email 
and let us consult with you on the 457B option. Um, this is a government employee only retirement account. It's designed for those that hope to retire in their early 50s. So, you know, we said a lot of firemen and policemen have this type of account, and a lot of educators are starting to jump on that bandwagon too. Um, I would if I was in your shoes if you started before age 30. Why? Well, because there's no 10% early withdrawal penalty um, once you start to take your money out. Uh, the only qualification for you to be able to access the money is that you've separated from service from your employer, and yes, that includes retirement. Um, the other plan option that you have available to you is a Roth 403B. Um, the word Roth in the financial world has really gained some steam over the years, um, and, and mostly because of the IRS. You know, who knows what our tax brackets are going to look like in the future? So with the pre-tax account, like the pre-tax 403B, the pre-tax 457B, Every dollar you put in lowers your income this year, or in the year that you put the money in, um, so it helps you on your taxes now. But well, once you hit retirement and you start to pull that money out to supplement your income, you pay, future, you pay income taxes on it at that point at whatever your future income rate is. Now, who thinks taxes are going to go down between now and retirement? And not me. Um, and the, you can tell by the laughs in the room that I think most people agree with me. Um, so what if you could go ahead and pay taxes on what you put in now and then potentially have the money grow tax-free on whatever the growth is? So whether it grows by a dollar or a million dollars, a Roth account gives you the chance to have tax-free growth where you don't have to worry about what future income taxes are. And the answer for a lot of you um, will be to have some pre-tax and some Roth money. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm throwing out all these strange words like Roth and 457 and 403. If it's making your brain fog up, you know, I certainly understand. I know it's a lot of information, uh, but that's why we're going to be here to help you all out as time goes on. Um, and we're, we're going to be here next week along with Alexander and company on Tuesday through Thursday. If anybody would like to meet with us, um, then please shoot us an email, then we'll be happy to set some time aside for mm -hmm. you. Um, and then after this presentation's over, we're also happy to answer some questions. And with that, I'd like to hand things over to Mr. Alexander. We started this with, uh, with retirement because retirement is going to be kind of the largest asset that most of us accumulate in our lives. My mom taught 26 years and my dad was the superintendent for 22 of his 31 years in education. And so I, I grew up under teacher retirement and state merit health insurance plan, if you remember calling it that. But here's, here's a, a fact that most people don't really think about. One of the easiest occupations to retire, the equivalent of a millionaire in this country today, is being a Georgia public educator. Because think about it. If I taught for, and I'm going to go on a side note here, Meyer, because this is so important for you all, and I'll make it up on my time. I'll go over 50 minutes. 15. <laughs> 50, 15. But if I talk for 30 years, Mike, I'm Mike, glad you're here in the room, and I ended my career, say, a $60,000 salary times you know, uh, $36,000 30, $36, retirement that I would get for the rest of my life from one of the most solvent, safe retirement plans in the country. Now, to be just an average American who doesn't have a defined benefit pension plan anymore. The majority of the country doesn't have what you get as an educator. I would have to have about seven, 750,000 in assets to pay me interest to get what, what you're gonna have from that pension plan. And when you add Social Security on top of that, and about another thousand or $1,200 that you're gonna get from Social Security <coughs> by working in a Social Security system, that's another equivalency of another couple of hundred thousand that you would have to have. So you're getting close to what the average American, me personally, I don't have a pension plan like you do at our firm. We don't have that anymore. The majority of the country doesn't. So the average American would literally have to have about a million dollars in the bank to get what you get as a Georgia public educator. Never forget the value of that. And it's one of the best managed retirement plans in the country. So I just don't want you to forget what just one of the many advantages that you have by being a Georgia public educator. Here's what we know. The majority of us are going to do most of the financial planning 
that we're going to do for any of our families, we're going to do it through benefits at work. So you've got kind of the whole cornerstone of most of the financial planning that we as Americans are going to do. You've got your retirement plan, a supplemental plan, and I'll take you through the other benefits right now. Of course, you all know you have your state health benefit plan. Now, one of the things, one of the changes that the committee made this year is we're going to change the, the plan year and the open enrollment. Right now, everything enrolls your supplemental benefits, not counting your health insurance. That's done in what, October, November, right? So we're going to line all of the other benefits up along with state health and run them from January to the end of December. It'll help you with flexible spending account, kind of uh, calculations, uh, deductibles and co-insurance and just running your plan years all the same along with state health. So what does that mean for your other plans? We're going to start July the 1st this year. We'll do this open enrollment in the next couple of weeks. And then we'll have your plans run for a short plan year for six months. Okay? And then they'll kind of reset and run from January to the end of December. Does that make sense? Okay? Um, you have your state health benefit plan and those different options that you have with that, with the State Health Benefit Plan, Kaiser, United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia. Uh, we've got some tools that help you with that when it comes up in October to help you know kind of which, which plans you all uh, do, okay? One, one point in one of the benefit changes, your dental, we're going to run a short plan year on the dental. So your dental plan works this way. You get the first $200 of expenses are covered at 100%. Okay? The next $1,600 are covered at 50%, up to $1,000 in benefits. So for the six months, we're just going to cut that in half. It'll still be the first $200 is covered at 100%. Okay? And then it'll be the balance up to $500. So the next $600, I guess, is covered at 50%. So we're going to run half of the annual maximum. Instead of 1,000, just have your plan maximum be 500 for this first six months. And then January the 1st, it'll start back over at 1,000 for the next 12 months. Does that make sense? OK. Uh, kind of going along on other plans. Other than your state health insurance, that's the most important benefit that we can have in our financial planning. It's the number one thing that we do with our financial dollars, our first dollars, health insurance something that happens very easily and be very costly, right? The second most important thing is protecting our income. If we got sick or hurt and we couldn't work, most Americans aren't independently wealthy, and we work because we have to have our paycheck. And if our paycheck stops, they, most of our stuff goes away. They take your house, they take your car, they cut your power off. That's just the rules. And so protecting your income is one of the most important things we can do. And you have two ways to do that here, short-term and long-term disability coverage. Now, your short-term, we made one little change to the plan. You have two options. You can either start it after being sick or injured for two weeks, 14 <coughs> calendar days, okay, or the expiration of your sick leave, whichever is longer. So if you have more sick leave than that, you use your sick leave, and then it starts. So 14 calendar days is the earliest, okay? That's two weeks. And it used to be you could wait and maybe start it after 30 calendar days. It would be a little uh, less, less price to wait longer before it started. And so we looked at all the data of who was enrolled in those plans, and you know the, the average person that was enrolled in the 30-day plan had about 45 accumulated sick leave days, okay, which is a little over two months. Of, of actually sick leave work time that you have, 20 sick leave days in a month. So we wanted to take that plan because we were kind of wasting some of your money if you had sick leave that long. So we're going to take that 30-day plan and make it a 45-day waiting period before it starts. That will lower the price of that plan for those of you who have a lot of sick leave, but you still want to have short-term disability, okay? So you'll now have the 14-day, the one that starts earlier, or you'll have a 45, and that's 45 calendar days, not work days. That's 45 calendar days, okay? So a month and a half. So how do you know which one to use? Kind of look at how much sick leave you have. And if you have a lot of sick leave, take the 45-day or 
those plans would actually pay a benefit for up to six months. Okay. Now, if you were still out after six months, that's a that's a that's a big issue. You, you've probably got something back. The board actually buys long-term disability coverage for you. I don't know if you've forgotten that, but they do that. It's one of the greatest paternalistic things they can do from a financial planning perspective that they can do for you. So if you got sick or injured and you qualified, they can, that disability coverage can protect your income for the rest of your working life, up to Social Security normal retirement age. So a great benefit by, by being here in Calhoun City Schools. That, that plan didn't change, and they're still paying that cost for you. Your other benefits that you have, they actually pay for life insurance for you. I think $30,000 of life and it doubles if you die accidentally, accidental death and dismemberment. So, I mean, 30,000. Most of the schools that we work with don't do anything with free life insurance. So they give you a free $30,000 of life insurance, which is, which is awesome. You have additional voluntary term life insurance that many of you, uh, most of you have actually taken, okay? Term insurance means you're just paying for the, the death risk, the mortality costs. So when you're older, I mean, when you're younger, it's cheaper, right? When you get older, it gets more expensive. You're getting closer to a claim, so the price goes up, right? This is how we're made. So that's term insurance. Typically, to, that's to be used when you're younger and have higher life insurance or financial obligations. <coughs> life insurance is just, it's just protecting financial obligations that we have. If I'm not here, it takes care of those things. So term, cheaper, and gets more expensive. So use it when you're younger and need higher, have higher obligations. Then we have permanent life insurance that is more expensive than the term, but you lock that price in and it stays level for the rest of your life. Okay? That's what you would have when you have just an unforeseen length of time that you want to have kind of financial obligations covered. Okay? So if you said, I need life insurance, and I said, how long you need it? And you go, till I die. And that's a permanent obligation to be taken with permanent life insurance, not something that's going to keep getting more expensive. Okay? So you have two kinds of life insurance, one for temporary obligations and then one for permanent financial obligations. That's why we have both of those. Okay? Uh, dental, I've gone through that. It's direct reimbursement. It just pays on dollar amounts, not on percentages. Uh, and by the way, your dental, that $1,000 every year can be used for orthodontics for, for your children every year. Most plans, it's a 1000 lifetime. So your plan is very unique in that you can use your child or I think adult orthodontic as well. You can use that every year for orthodontics, which is kind of unusual. You have your vision coverage that's available. If you're having trouble reading this, you might want to make a note. Look at that. That's your vision coverage is available. Uh, you have critical illness. Critical illness is, is something that you choose a, a face amount, of five, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars. And if you were diagnosed with one of a number of critical illnesses, cancer, heart attack, stroke, permanent paralysis, uh, end stage renal failure, and there's 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 others, it just pays you that that lump sum. Okay, and you take that with you when you leave. And then you have your flexible spending accounts as well. Flexible spending accounts, if many of you have them, they're divided into two areas, health care and dependent care. Health care means you put in a dollar amount of, for things that are not covered by insurance, things like the 50% that dental doesn't cover, lens solution, the $10 eye exam copay, you know, deductibles, co-insurance on your health insurance. Anything that's not reimbursed, eligible expenses, not reimbursed by insurance, you can kind of guesstimate how much you're going to have out of pocket. And we take that, you, you log on or we help you in the call center or, or next week at the help desk. We put that amount in, and that money comes out before taxes, before federal, state, and Social Security, Social Security taxes. It's an exemption of, of those taxes. So if I put $100 in, for example, for orthodontics and deductibles and things that I know just aren't covered every year, that I know I'm going to have out of pocket, that's $1,200 a year, that 100 would come out of my paycheck before taxes. So it would probably reduce my take-home pay uh, $70 or $80 because of the tax savings. That money goes into my account. You get a debit card. When you go to the doctor or the dentist or the pharmacy, they swipe that 
it instantaneously pays that bill and comes off about twelve hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have rollover, correct? That's, that's correct. Uh, this coming fall, we're going to have a, a new enhancement. We're going to add to that. Right now, if I if what you put in for the next six months you don't use, you will lose that. It's it's forfeited your employer. It's federal law, and that's that's how that works. But we're going to have a change to that. Come. So it's already got the five hundred dollar rollover now. But right now we're not enrolling in place. That's exactly that right. Now. That's exactly right. Um, that's all. So we're not enrolling in flex right now. We'll do that in the fall. So good stuff to come on that. Uh, we also have, you can go to mycalhounbenefits.com. Anywhere in the world you are, if you want to find out about these things, uh, but we have the site mycalhounbenefits.com. Or you can actually get it through the home page of the school system. If you forget that, you can go through there as well. But when that pulls up, there's three portal buttons. On the left is the Employee Benefit Center. It's a green button, and it's got all this stuff that I've just talked about. And uh, lots of helpful tools for that. When you go to the State Help button in the center, uh, there's video help underneath that. When you click on that, we've got a full 17-minute video on the whole State Help plan, how it works to help you. We've got a little two-minute version of just the changes that happened this year that are happening. And then a three-minute video that says, help me choose or which plan do I choose and it walks you through if you're a low medium or high user of health care which plan to choose so that's helpful in the fall when state health opens up for open enrollment so you can look at that now and kind of refresh yourself if you need a refresher course uh, and then the blue button on the right is the one that you log in to see your personal benefits okay so you've got three ways to enroll coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, we have a help desk that's going to be in the schools and on, when you go in the Employee Benefit Center, the green button will have the dates and the locations. Third, fourth, and fifth, is that right? Third, fourth, and fifth? Third, fourth, and fifth, I think starting at Calhoun here. On the third. So we'll, we'll have the dates, uh, we'll send those dates of where we'll have people. You can also call our call center. When you go to My Calhoun Benefits, 12 months out of the year, the call center number is there. So if you're away from school and you need help with things, you can call our, our people in Woodstock and they'll, they'll help you out. They'll pull up your information and, and be able to help you. Uh, don't forget that. But they can help you enroll in the next couple of weeks. And a lot of people like to do stuff anonymously with somebody. But that's fine. Or anywhere in the world you are, if you just want to log on and do it yourself with spouses or financial advisor, do that as well. Hopefully this helps some. It kind of, when you think about insurance, it's like being a mosquito at a nudist colony. You know what needs to be done, you just don't know where to start. <laughs> so we just kind of want to be here and help y'all and be on site next. I think that's funny stuff. That's some funny stuff. So uh, be here and help you and just give you different ways that you can you can do this stuff. Do we miss anything? Myra did, hated that I was hogging the camera time. She wanted to come back up here. No, um, I think we're good on that. Um, I think one of the biggest things is just to kind of recap. Um, Mike talked about the teacher retirement because the max you can get at 40 years of service, which who wants to work for 40 years? <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. That uh, would be 80% of your income. So, Miss Carol, not to call you out, but are you going to receive your full check in retirement? I'm sorry, full 30 years? Are you get, yeah, are you going to receive your full check of what you're receiving now in your retirement? Is it going to be the same amount? No. Okay. So the supplemental retirement, which is what Valak, the purpose of the 1% auto enrollment, especially for the, those young 20 year olds that are coming into um, to teach and anything else, they don't know any better. They don't know their state health insurance. They don't, I mean, half of the 30 year olds, the 40 year olds still don't know. They still call me going, hey, um, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and it's fine, I get it completely because it's confusing even to me. So to do the 1% auto enrollment, um, that's going to help y'all in the long run. And so if y'all hear anybody talking negative about it, just send them my way or just let them know that it's for their benefit. We make nothing off of it. I don't get anything. The school doesn't get anything. It's for your benefit so that when you're ready to retire, you can go. You don't have to stay here and, and be miserable and make the kids miserable. You can go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to punch that in there. <laughs> and then Dale, you know, just talked about the enrollment and the benefits and stuff too. So y'all know about the benefits. The only thing you can't enroll in right now is your state health insurance 
and the flex will spin in the camera, okay? So we're good. Any questions?